Hi, so my uh, camera is a little bit wonky <laughs> because I'm trying to fit the whole Jingo thing in. Um, but here we go, we're gonna play Jinga for June. Um, so I'm gonna go for six pulls this time.
so I just finished playing Jenga and that was pretty successful. So let's go ahead and look through my picks for Jenga reading my shelf. For history, I picked a couple of different things, but in the end I ended up going with this one for this month. This is The Damnation of John Donlin, a mysterious case of death and scandal in Georgian England. And I've had this on my shelf for a long time. Um, I have had it so long that I probably wouldn't have any idea where I got it from, except that it does have this Better World Books sticker on the side. So I know that at some point I purchased it from Better World Books. I kind of think I got it when I lived in Florida, which would have been a very long time ago, seven or eight years ago. And I also know that I have read, I just recently um, ended the flap here. So I know that I've read to page 13 in this book and never read beyond that. So it's time to find out if this is a book that I want to read um, or if it is a book that I want to unhaul. So this is my history choice. And then I don't know what to do with them. I always just drop them on the floor, but then I have to pick them all up. So I don't want to do that. Um, I'll slip it back here. All right, so now this may be a little bit of a controversy controversial choice. Um, I'm gonna call it a horror classic. It would be a very recent horror classic, uh, but I do believe it will be a classic of the horror genre. And I am going to read House of Leaves. Um, I recently saw um, for Booking Out Loud and How to Train Your Gavin, two incredibly different readers, um, but both of them did vlogs on House of Leaves. And I remember when this book came out, I remember seeing it on a Barnes and Noble new releases table and thinking, I am not touching that thing with a 10 foot pole. But here I am holding it with my two hands and clutching it to my cheek. Um, I'm gonna read this for my classic pick and um, we'll see if I make it through. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. Um, but watching for Booking Out Loud and How to Train Your Gavin, like I said, two incredibly different readers, um, read that book made me want to read that book. So also since that book came out, I have become much braver with reading horror um, and, and realizing that, that I, if it's done like right for me, I really quite enjoy it. So I'm hoping, my fingers crossed. Um, then I picked two poetry tiles. So the two books of poetry that I will be reading, one was a gift to me and I haven't read it yet. So um, I've had it, it was a Secret Santa gift that I received from a work friend multiple years ago, not too long ago, but years. Um, and so I'm going to read this. This is Emily Dickinson, The Envelope Poems. I am an Emily Dickinson fan. Um, and so this this will be fun. Um, it's just about, oh, <laughs> the card that came with it. Um, it's just like pictures of the envelopes with Emily's handwriting, and then a typed out um, transcription of the poem that she wrote. Sometimes it's poems, sometimes it's just a series of words. Um, I've skimmed through it and I've read a couple of them, but not like start to finish, not intentionally. So I'll do that. And then the other one that I picked is Billy Collins, Sailing Alone Around the Room, New and Selected Poems. This is not his newest work. I've had this for a really long time. Um, I got this because of one poem and I've only read two or three poems out of it in all the years that I've had it. Um, and so I am, and I got it, I got it at Powell's. Um, so I am planning on reading it from start to finish this month uh, and enjoying that. I am a huge Billy Collins fan. I absolutely love Billy Collins. Um, for the philosophy um, pick, I'm gonna read American Philosophy, A Love Story. I have read bits and pieces of this. This is about transcendentalism. It's also a memoir of a professor of transcendentalism and a student of transcendentalism, uh, John Keg, Cog, Cag, I'm not sure how to say his name, but I have, like I said, I've read, I think I've probably read 95% of this, just not in order. And so I, because I purchased it and read it for a very specific 
uh, reason, some, some research. I am going to read it from start to finish as it was intended and um, enjoy it as the <coughs> full story arc that it actually is instead of parsing it apart for the first time ever. And I've had that for maybe three or four years. Then I'm gonna pick up a book that I meant to read in um, March for middle grade March. So for my middle grade pick, I'm going, actually I started this and didn't finish it. Um, I'm gonna read We Dream of Space. And I loved the beginning of this so much that uh, I'm going to be teaching it next year in sixth grade. Um, we have been teaching Hello Universe by Erin Entrada Kelly, but this is her latest. And so we're going to move to this one. Um, and I don't know the ending of it. <laughs> I am really excited to read the ending of it now. Um, but again, I picked this up in March, but I started reading it and was so over middle grade by the time I got to this one um, that I just needed to stop <laughs> with the middle grade. And I'm ready to go back to it now. And I think I have like two thirds of it left to do. Um, but the beginning of it was so promising and I love Erin and Trotta Kelly so much that I already know that it's going to be a glorious book. And then for the fiction tile that I picked, I'm going to read this, which uh, has been on my shelf for like a couple of weeks. This is Madam by Phoebe Wynn. And I'm super excited about this one. Um, so it says... Where is it? Where's the line that got me? Imagine if Donna Tartt and Margaret Atwood got together to write a creepy, suspenseful novel about a school for young women in the Scottish Highlands. Does not, I mean, does that not sound like it was written just for me? It was totally written just for me. This could be called Madam Jenna's Book. <laughs> so I'm excited to read this one. I um, had it pre-ordered. I think I saw it on book break? I'm not sure. I think it released in England before it released in the States. Um, but I pre-ordered it quite a long time ago based on a video that I had seen um, and a recommendation from somebody on booktube that I really like. And I think it was book break. Um, I think it was Emma. So then I picked creativity and I, I'm not feeling creativity, but I, I, I didn't. Yeah. Anyway, I pulled a creativity prompt. Um, so I went to my creativity shelves and I pulled flow. Um, their mindfulness workbook, which I have owned for probably six years or something. They do put dates on these, I think. I don't know. Um, but I've never actually like sat down to do it. I have thumbed through it and never actually done anything with it. And I'll be teaching a ton of art journaling classes this summer. So, um, this, if you're not familiar with Flow, um, each each edition that they put out has some articles in it, but also have um, stationary items and layouts for art journaling pages. And um, this one happens to be focused on mindfulness. They're not all focused on mindfulness, <laughs> but I am going to, like it says here, it's a book to read and to write in with exercises, insights, and paper goodies. That's what every edition of Flow is. Um, and so I've had this one, like I said, for a really long time and I've just never done anything with it. And so this month I am going to finally check that off the list of things that I would like to do, but never do. So it seems like a good opportunity. Then I have three books that were sent to me by publishers that I'm really excited to read. This one, comes out June 1st and I just got my copy yesterday. This is not, the copy that I have here is not an ARC. This is a uh, review copy. And so I'm really excited about this one. I don't know anything about it except that uh, it's, a, it's a novel told in two stories and you read the first story like the traditional way. You open it up and everything looks quite normal. And then to read the second story, you have to flip it over and you start the second story in the traditional way. <laughs> I just, I think that that's so clever. So in between the stories, like you're reading along, right? And then you get to a couple of pages that look like this, and then boom, you're upside down because that's the end of the other story. So I think that's so clever and I'm curious about a novel written in two stories like this. Also coming out in June, 
is this one, which I'm so excited about. Oh my goodness, I requested this one and I got it. And that makes me very happy because I am pretty much obsessed with Ethel Rosenberg. Um, and this is a biography of Ethel Rosenberg that uses her prison letters, which has not been done in a Rosenberg biography before. So I'm so excited about this one and um, I will probably start reading it. It's May right now as I'm filming this. It's the last week and a half of May. I will probably start reading this now, like today. Um, so this is by Anne, Anne Seba and it comes out on the 8th of June. So if you wanna read this too, you don't have to wait for me to finish it and to give you a review. Um, you can pick it up on June 8th and read it in June with me. That sounds awesome. But I will be doing a review of this one. And again, thank you so much to St. Martin Press for sending me a copy of this. You have no idea, you made my month so excited. Also received, I am a Celadon reader, and so Celadon sometimes just sends me books, and wait, they sent this one my way, and I'm really glad they did. This is Brothers on Three. This does not come out until September, so you've got some time, but I'm excited to read this, so I'm gonna read it in June because I am an impatient little um, hedgehog. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna read this one. Um, this is the true story of family resistance and hope on a reservation in Montana. Um, and there is a whole um, interview with Abe Streep um, included in my little like press packet that comes with the book um, where he talks about how much time and how many years he put into becoming part of this community and getting the permission of the individuals in these stories uh, before even attempting to write this book. So um, not only am I going into this curious and wanting to be informed, but also respectful of the process that went into the making of this book in the first place. So I'm excited to read this one. Then I have, of course, books that I will read um, for lots of prescribed reasons. First of all, I'm going to finish this one, which I started in may but have not finished yet and absolutely am loving so this is fresh water for flowers um and i am 200 I'm, I'm a little less than halfway in um so i'll finish this fairly quickly fairly early on but i will be reading that to finish it it is time for another um installment in barchester so this is framley parsonage um it looks very dramatic this one yeah, so we'll see. I don't know what happens in this. I'm kind of reading the back of it right this moment. Um, I'm not sure what happens to this one, but this is the next one in the Barchester Chronicles. Halfway through this journey with Barchester, I have read the first three and had varying levels of success with all of them, but my favorite so far has definitely been Dr. Thorne. And, uh, and yet I still feel like Trollope's writing is kind of lackluster, I guess is a great way to say it. Um, and maybe it's not fair that I'm reading him at the same time as I'm reading Dickens. I know that people tend to fall. I didn't know this until this year, but now I know very clearly that people tend to fall into either a pro Dickens or a pro Trollope camp. And here I am with one foot in each <laughs> and feeling very much like a Dickens enthusiast as opposed to a Trollope enthusiast. And maybe that's not fair. Um, I don't know, but they feel like two very different worlds to me. And in reality, they are two very different worlds. So this is the next one. And uh, I have two months to read this. I, I don't know if I really will pick it up in June or if I'll wait till July, but it is the time um, to start this one. So, you know, with the global group that I'm doing this with, um, they're picking it up for the next two month cycle. So yeah, I may or may not start this in June. Uh, but it will definitely be done before the end of July. The next book in Dickens is quite a chunky friend. Um, check that out. The next one is Dombey and Son. And I don't know a whole lot about Dombey and Son, but I have high hopes because um, I know that Katie from Books and Things really enjoys this one. And so I am hoping I will really enjoy this one too. I have enjoyed all of the Dickens that I have read, but 
if you saw my wrap up video for last month, uh, for May, then you know that I've kind of reached a point with Dickens where I really want some depth. The humor is great, but it's it's starting to wear on me a little bit. Six months in to my romp with Dickens in chronological order, and I am looking for a little bit more heft and hopeful of that. I know it's coming in future books that I'm more familiar with. Dombey is, I think, my last book that I know nothing about. Um, and so, hey, Joey, what's wrong, baby? What's wrong? Oh, you're bored? He's bored. So I think it's my last book that I know nothing about. So I'm hopeful that that maybe it's the start of a little heft <laughs> besides just the weight of the book. <laughs> um, and then for my, hi, hi, my dog is bored. Um, and he wants attention and love and snuggles. So he's here and I'm petting him with this hand. <laughs> um, for Read Harder, I'm getting down to it. I'm almost done with all of the prompts. So I'm only going to do one instead of two Read Harder challenge books this month. And that is going to be Big Sister, Little Sister, Red Sister, Three Women at the Heart of 20th Century China by Jung Chong. Uh, now, Jung Chong wrote Wild Swans, which is one of my absolute favorite books of all time. Um, I read that book while I was in China, living and working in China, and uh, it was such a great experience. And I have gifted that book to so many people. I have probably personally purchased at least eight copies um, and given them all away, except for the one that I have right now. Um, a little bit apprehensive about that, about reading Big Sister, Little Sister, Red Sister, just because I then picked up Mao after having read Wild Swans and did not love it. I did not read, what is it, Empress Sir Chi? Is that what it is? Sir Chi? I don't remember. Um, but I didn't read that one, and I probably would have enjoyed that one. I think she writes about women really well. I am a little bit apprehensive about Big Sister, Little Sister, Red Sister, uh, because it is a really chunky, really dense book. I am hoping that it will have the same kind of quality and heart that Wild Swans had, um, but I am fully prepared for it to fall a little flat like Mao did. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Full disclosure, I do have the book, uh, but I will also be listening to an audio copy of it. I just find she's so dense, um, at times, if it's if it's the history side of her, like if it's the Mao side, it's going to be so dense that I'm not going to be able to get through it in one month unless I'm listening. So I'll start out by listening to it and see how it goes, and then maybe I'll read it. Because if it's the memoir type of thing, then I might get through it faster if I'm not listening. There's my process. Um, I'm also going to read the second book in Christian Lavren's Daughter, which is The Mistress of... Hussabi. Um, and I loved rereading the first installment in this trilogy. Last month, I'm going to pick up this one. Hopefully, I will have the restraint to wait till next month to do the third one. We'll see. And then, of course, the next book in the Irish Country Doctor series is An Irish Country Wedding. I don't know where we'll be, who's getting married, what we're focusing on. I, of course, have my ideas, but who knows? I know that I will love it though, no matter what's happening. Those are the books that I'm going to read. That is my uh, TBR pile. It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 books strong. Um, and some of them are quite chunky. But I also have a stack of possibilities, um, books that I would really like to read in the coming month. Um, so I've pulled them and I will just have them sitting available um, to pull from over the course of the month and we'll see how many I get through. I am only working half of this upcoming month, half of June, 
and the other half is the beginning of my summer break. I'm a teacher, so I get some time off. I am hoping to move apartments during that time, but it's also the summer, so <laughs> I probably will have a lot of time. Things are opening up around my area. Um, so I might be able to be out in the world a little bit more, but I'm also like a homebody anyway. I'm guessing that it's a good possibility that I can get through my 17 books and then some since I do it normally anyway. But I'm not making these official TBR books. There's no sadness if I don't get to them. There's no sadness if I don't get to my TBR books either, really. Um, but they are goals. And, um, and I do feel good when I get through them. So these, however, are not. These are just books that I would like to try and read in the month of June. These books include A Good Neighbor by Teresa Ann Fowler, The Factory Witches of Lowell by C.S. Malrich, the Beautiful Ones by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia. Vanishing Falls by Poppy Gee. The Woman in the Green Dress by T. Cooper. That might be Taya Cooper. The Library at the Edge of the World by Felicity Hayes McCoy. I actually have this whole series, one on pre-order, based on the synopsis and the covers alone. I need to get reading on this series. <laughs> so, I really probably should add this to my TBR. In fact, I'm going to. I'm adding this to my TBR because I really need to get on that series. The Color of Milk. Kate and Clara's Curious Cornish Craft Shop. I love that title. Kate and Clara's Curious Cornish Craft, Cornish Craft Shop. The Beekeeper's Cottage by Emma Davies. Uh, Kate and Clara is by Allie McNamara. Aren't those, they just look like summer. Don't they just look like summer? Abigail Hall. This one sounds so good. A creepy gothic psychological th thriller that won't let you go. A tense, intelligent read that surprises right up to its unexpected conclusion, which probably means I'll figure it out in the first 50 pages, but that's okay. And then this one, which I really want to read. This is brand new. Uh, this is The Lamplighters. I admittedly am much more intrigued by the true story that this is based on, um, but I am also just so curious to see what Emma Stonex does with that true story. Um, she really takes it and makes it her own. I know that much. Uh, she changes the location, she changes the time period, um, all of that, but I am familiar with the true story and um, am curious to know her take on it. This, um, without having even read it, just because the true story does, this gives me a uh, picnic at, blah, 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 I can't speak, picnic at hanging rock vibes. I don't know if that's how it will really read, but that's the feeling I have in my anticipation. So The Lamplighters by Emma Stone X, a mystery, a love story, and a ghost story all at once. Oh, wonderful is what the little blurb on the front says. So those are the books that I would like to read in June if I can get to them. But the books that I am going to read for my TBR are vast and varied and multiple. <laughs> so anyway, that is uh, my TBR. I think that Jenga treated me very kindly this month. Um, and I look forward, it's, it's, it's a good, I'm looking at them, they're all stacked behind the camera. Um, it's a really varied set of books, and there's a really good representation of nonfiction. I've been looking at um, my story graph stats and the little pie chart for, um, well, first of all, I'm 60 books ahead of schedule for my goal of reading 180 books this year. <laughs> so I haven't read 180 books, but like they break it down, like you should read, you know, X amount of books per month to meet your goal. My overall goal is 180 books for this year. I am 60 books ahead of schedule. <laughs> So I could stop reading for a good few months and still meet my goal. Um, I won't, but I could. Um, oh, so I was looking at my stats and um, the one that tells you like how much fiction versus nonfiction you've read. I've This year I've read um, a quarter of that pie chart is nonfiction, which I think is great, but I would like it to be half. And I know that I'll be able to make up quite a lot in... Um, November for nonfiction November, but I also know that last year 
at around November time, I wanted to start reading holiday reads and like family dramas and lighthearted things. So I feel like nonfiction doesn't fit well for me in November. So I don't know if I can count on November, even though I should be able to. So uh, I think a fourth of my pie chart is pretty good, but I, I don't necessarily want a half, but I want it bigger than a fourth. I want, I want more than a fourth. I want more than a fourth of my uh, reading to have been nonfiction this year. So that's just a personal goal. I, I have, I have no real reason for that other than I enjoy nonfiction, uh, but I don't tend to pull it off the shelf as often as I pull fiction off the shelf. And, um, so I want to be intentional about making sure that I participate in an activity that I do enjoy, but just don't think of, because um, it's not as flashy as fiction, right? Yeah. Anyway, excited about what I have here. Um, we'll see how the month goes. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>